Hello everybody, uh, my name is James, uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Workshop Coffee uh, and today we're going to brew up a cup of coffee from Peru from Miranda Huaman Gregoria. I'm going to use um, 18 grams of coffee to make a pretty nice large mug and I wouldn't say this is a recipe specific for this coffee, this is just typically how I would make any kind of pour over coffee um, which works very well for this. So let's get our kettle on. If you have a pouring kettle, that's great. It will give you a bit more control and you want your water to be boiling. And then grind the coffee around medium. It's hard to communicate where to grind the coffee. Ultimately, you're going to make more than one cup of coffee in your life. So check your grind on the first one, go coarser or finer to make sure it drains through nicely and tastes good. And then you'll know roughly where your grinder needs to be for a single cup pour over like this. I'm just going to rinse the filter paper in tap water because it's very likely if you're brewing nice coffee at home um, you're going to want to find nice water to brew with as well it's a shame to waste that to rinse the filter paper if you've had to buy it or make it from a filter jug or anything like that so water is boiled and also with a plastic brewer it doesn't really matter about getting it warm if you've got a ceramic one maybe put it on your kettle when you're brewing or some, uh, when you're boiling it or something like that to warm it up or you can rinse it if you want to so 18 grams of coffee go in. Give it a little shake. I'm just gonna put a little hole in the bottom. I don't really know why. It seems to make it get wet better uh, and more evenly. You can use a timer if you want as well. Let's see how long it takes to make the cup. And the first step is what we call the bloom. So all we're doing really is trying to get all the coffee wet without using too much of our overall water. Some of this is going to drip through, of course, unless we're using like a switch, Harrier switch or something like that. This allows the coffee grounds to swell up a little bit, take in a bit of water, it will degas and it will make the next pouring stage a bit easier. So I've used about 40 grams of water for this. Depending on how fresh the coffee is, you might want to bloom for a long time. If it's very, very fresh, maybe give it 45 seconds to a minute. If it's a little older, you've had it open for a couple of weeks, 30 seconds is probably okay. This is quite fresh coffee here, so I'm going to wait about 40 seconds. It smells really good. <laughs> uh, now, I'm not too precious about how much water to add uh, for each pulse or anything like that. Really, what you want to do is look at the bed. Try and keep it at about a similar height during the brew cycle. Uh, you probably want your water in by two to two and a half minutes uh, if you're brewing a, a single cup. And it should be draining through nice and slowly between pours. If anything bubbles up, maybe you missed the dry pocket, so go over that bit. And um, yeah, just keep it, keep it topped up and happy. Um, so this is a, a Bourbon variety coffee grown by Miranda on her farm Mesa Pata, which is in the Huanapata region of Cusco in Peru. It's a very high elevation farm, 2000 meters. So there's not really too much of a problem with uh, leaf rust or broca, which is great. She's uh, completely organic, um, putting her own homemade fertilizer on the trees. And the coffee's grown under Pakai shade trees as well. So I, I feel like it's a nice biodiverse farm with very minimal uh, impact on the environment. She's been working for five years with the Vay Inca group, with whom we, uh, we partnered to buy quite a few coffees from Cusco region, uh, but actually been producing coffee for the last 33 years, so she's very experienced. Um, but Vay Inca are giving her a, an, a access to a specialty market, so getting a premium payment for her coffee now. So I'm coming at two minutes and I'm about 220 grams. I want to put 300 grams of water in and this is a nice kettle to use because it allows me to be really accurate and draw over any dark patches, keep the level topped up, gives me some control and it just feels nice to use, it doesn't slosh around like a big kettle. But if you have a big kettle that's totally fine, you might want to grind a bit finer because um, there'll maybe be a bit more bypass uh, happening in your, in your coffee brewing. I would recommend using an immersion method if you have a, a normal kettle and if you're doing pour over this is a worthwhile investment after sorting out your water and your grinder. So we're at 230 and 300 grams. Give it a little shuffle or a spin or whatever you want to do and that's going to help it drain through evenly. Evenness is a bit tricky to achieve uh, when making pour over coffee. Every brewer is somewhat flawed. I like the V60 uh, particularly. 
Um, but there will be some bypass happening. Doesn't really matter. It's, the flavors are still going to be relatively nice. If you get good water, good coffee, and a good grind size, you can go down the rabbit hole of perfecting your brewing, but I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> Just have fun with the process. Um, smell all the while, because this is, this is kicking out aroma the whole time. So you're already able to start enjoying your cup of coffee. For me, um, the way that Miranda is actually processing her coffee is imprinting the flavor profile in an interesting way. If we were another roaster, we might call this an anaerobic coffee. What Miranda does is, uh, after harvesting the coffee cherries, she has a manually cranked depulping machine to remove the skins and some of the mucilage layer. And that is then sealed in grain probe bags in a plastic barrel with a carboy on the top to allow degassing. So it's fermenting in a controlled oxygen depleted environment for 39 hours before it's taken out fully washed and dried on raised beds in a secador, ventilated polytunnel. That's a really good way of drying coffee because it, it's uh, not too intense and it allows for good ventilation if they ventilate it well. So that, that process, yeah, it, it could, could be called anaerobic, but I feel like that's a little bit of a crutch or, or, or a sort of catch-all for there being fermentation flavors and, a, and maybe an excuse. Because actually I don't find this coffee to have massive amounts of fermented flavors. It's very, very clean. There are, there are hints of tropical fruits going on here, but they're not out of control. They're very restrained, kind of like mangosteen, persimmon, that kind of fleshy fruit without it being too, too ripe and fermenting. Um, I know papaya is a relatively divisive flavor note, for example, and it's not that kind of uh, farmyardy fruit thing going on. It's still very clean and immensely sweet. Um, even though this coffee is a little bit old off the tree, it was picked about a year ago because of the density of the fruit and the way it's been dried and uh, you know being very rigorous in when we were vetting the samples to buy it we knew it had very long legs and it still tastes incredibly fresh uh, for being a relatively old crop so we're getting some some early picking samples from Miranda already at this point um, and the idea of a, a coffee producer being armed with the infrastructure and the knowledge to create clean uh, create clean lots in a controlled environment but also produce coffee with this kind of stability is very exciting and being one of the many producers we work with with Value Inca I'm pretty sure we're going to want to work with Miranda again for years to come. Uh, this might be a bit hot, but let's taste. Ah, it's a bit hot. <laughs> let's try again. Mm. <laughs> All the sugars. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's really, really sweet. I feel like you could stand a spoon in it. Um, I like uh, that this is a bit of a medium roast. We're not doing a massively light roast on this. It's got a good amount of caramelization to it, so there's some depth to the to the sugars. It's not just uh, one dimensional. It's a bit more rounded. But the acidity reminds me of oranges in that it's a sweet citrus going on. It's not bright uh, lemony citrus, but it's kind of orangey. And like I mentioned before, those tropical fruit, fruit flavors are really, really nice as well. So it's kind of complex, but at the same time, very comforting. Um, a real all-rounder, ticks a lot of boxes. Um, for me, a really great example of uh, what Peru is capable of doing. Mm. That's it. Enjoy your coffee.